what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to talk all about activity indicators in swift ui so we're going to put together this app you see here we're going to tap this button and here i have displayed three different activity loading indicators uh, the way we're going to discuss has a bunch of different options and styles and ways to customize it um, this one here is in particular my favorite but I digress, they look really nice in light mode and dark mode, and we'll take a look at how to bring this fairly important component into your guys' apps. So make sure you start by destroying that like button, it helps out the channel, helps out the video, the whole nine yards. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Consider hitting subscribe while you're at it. Get Xcode ready, get excited. Let's talk about some activity indicators in SwiftUI. Quick pause before the video. This video is brought to you by iosacademy.io. If you're interested in building some of the top apps from around the world, like YouTube, Instagram, Uber, and Facebook, head on over to iosacademy.io and toss in your email in the waitlist form here to be notified as content becomes available. Content includes interview prep, free courses, premium content, how to build TikTok, Messenger, Instagram, and anything else you could think of in between. That said, let's get into the video. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project here. We're gonna stick with the app template under iOS, and I'm gonna go ahead and call this Swift UI Activity Indicators. Make sure your lifecycle and interface are both Swift UI, and of course your language is Swift Go ahead and continue and we'll save it to our desktop. Let me go ahead and expand our Xcode window here, close up this right panel. Let's go ahead and resume our uh, Xcode preview here. Sometimes this guy is a little slow, so just be patient with it. And uh, while it's actually loading over here, uh, let's head on over to this GitHub repo. I've got the link in the description for uh, this component and we're gonna wanna bring this into our project via Swift Package Manager. So go ahead and copy that URL. And back here in Xcode, let's go ahead and hit File and come down to Swift Packages, Add Package Dependency. And that's gonna open up this uh, modal here. So go ahead and paste in that URL and just hit Enter. And Xcode will resolve the latest version. Keep all of this as is. It's just picking up the latest version. Go ahead and continue, should not take very long, just a few seconds here. It's just downloading the dependency and just bear with it. Sometimes it takes 10 seconds, sometimes a little more. So there it goes, it's done. We can go ahead and hit finish and it has brought in the dependency here. So cool, let's jump back to our content view. Hit command B to make sure it's all compiling and it also looks like our uh, canvas over here has decided to load the preview. And you'll see the dependency right here. It's called activity indicator view. And uh, of course to use it, the first thing we wanna do is say import activity indicator view, just like that. And what we can do is, let me go ahead and let's get rid of this text. And I'm gonna put a navigation view in here with a vertical stack. We're gonna give it a title of let's say home and uh, let's create a activity indicator view. So we're gonna put that there and open up the constructor. The first thing you'll see is visible is a binding bool, and then you have a type here. So for this binding bool, we're gonna use the dollar sign and we're gonna create a state property called loading and I'm gonna toss it right up here. So it'll be at state var loading and by default, we're gonna say false. So, you know, we tap on a button, we could show this, uh, just toggle this to true, but uh, what we actually wanna do is make it true so we can actually see it. And the next thing here we have is type. So it's actually an enum and you can just hit uh, a dot here and you'll see uh, there are quite a few different types in here. So let's just stick with uh, default and let's see what that looks like. And then we'll uh, play with the types uh, in just a moment here. So. Let's go ahead and hit resume for our preview. And hello world should go away. We should see home up here and uh, something going on over here. So this definitely is not what we want. It's uh, obnoxiously large. So what do we wanna do? We wanna use the frame modifier and assign a width and a height. So I'm gonna say 100, 100 and an alignment of center. 
uh, just like that. And uh, what you'll be able to do now is if you actually hit this little play button for the live preview, you'll see that the actual loader just starts uh, spinning here. So default is the most uh, you know, basic kind of uh, activity indicator you would expect. It's basically what's offered in iOS uh, at a UI kit. So let's take a look at some of the other ones. So this one here is called Arcs. And uh, just like that, what it does is, uh, I don't know, I'm not entirely sure why they call it Arcs, but it kind of like flies in and does this uh, weird little animation thing. I'm not a major fan of this one. So let's continue down the list. If we take a look at Equalizer, this one I really like. It's like a pulsing equal, I guess it's an equalizer. That's why they call it that. But the other thing you can also do with these, if I'm not mistaken, we can actually let's try a foreground color and set it to uh, red here. And these components are actually templates, just like SF symbols. So you can actually set the foreground color of this to be basically whatever the heck you want, and you can really make it um, look and feel to match your needs. So that's equalizer. So let's keep going. We're going to do flickering dots, which I personally also like. This is like the first one, but you know they're dots instead of the spinner looking thing. Uh, I personally think it looks pretty pretty elegant. And then here we have gradients. And if you take a look at the signature, in the actual gradient, you can pass in uh, a collection uh, of different colors. So we're going to say red, pink, and blue. And let's make this a comma, make that a dot right there. And uh, let's see here, it wants a CG line cap. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, that one right there. And let's see if it decides to show up. It does. Once again, this one flies in as well which I'm not the biggest fan of, but you know, it's available to you if you are. Let's continue down the list. Let's see, growing arc, we're just gonna look at growing circles since I think this is the other cool one that I enjoy. So this one's like a pulse from the middle, which uh, personally what I would do is put a couple of these next to each other. So um, if they were different colors, you can do that. So here's an orange one. And moving along down the list, We've got opacity dots, rotating and scaling. So I like rotating and the scaling one. So this one again so is kind of like a pulse type thing. And the last one we'll show here is a uh, rotating dots, which is this one right here. This kind of reminds me of the Google loader, except their loader actually uh, changes colors between every revolution of the circle. But um, you know, I digress, it's still really nice looking. However, the one thing we're gonna show before wrapping up here is, you know, how, how would you really show this in a real world scenario? So what I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do here is we're gonna grab this and we are going to uh, say this is actually false, just like that. And that'll actually get this to go away over here if we hit resume because the binding is now false just like that, it went away. And let me go ahead and add a uh, button here with an action. We want an action and a label. Now in this action, we're gonna say self.loading.toggle, just like that. Or we could just assign it to true in all fairness. And uh, in here, we're gonna go ahead and say, uh, let's say load data. And let me go ahead and apply some nice modifiers on here. So. It looks more like a button. We'll say 220, 50, centered. We'll give it a nice background color of green. And let me also give it a nice foreground color of color.white. This should actually be color.green. Let's give it a nice corner radius of eight points. We've got this slick looking button here. And when we go ahead and tap on it, boom, there's our loader. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's actually go ahead and add a couple of these stacked on top of each other, just so we can see them all in action side by side. So there's rotating dots, there's defaults, and my favorite equalizer. And we're gonna go ahead and give it a foreground color of, let's stick with blue for this one, and let's stick with green for that one. So uh, over here in our live preview, let's hit this and boom, there are our, uh, three different loaders. And if we wanted to, we could uh, add some padding on each of these to make them not as uh, close to each other. So padding, boom, padding, 
And third one, boom, padding. Go ahead and tap that. And uh, there you have it. That's how you can bring in activity indicators into your app. Super, super simple. Just bring in the dependency and uh, just create the components. And uh, of course, these all look really nice in both uh, light mode and dark mode. So if I go ahead and hit that and change this to be dark, you'll see that the preview here will update. Now let's go ahead and hit that play button. And if I tap on this, boom, none of them have weird background colors. Um, so yeah, this is definitely a pretty big staple for any Swift UI app uh, that's loading any kind of data. And that's all I've got for you guys. So if you haven't hit the like button already, make sure to do so. If you're new to the channel and found this helpful, make sure you hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Leave a comment down below. Do you guys like this? Would you prefer using UI view representable to bring in UI kits standard spinner? Uh, what are you guys' thoughts? Leave a comment down below generally and also feedback if you want to see any particular video. So that's all I've got. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next one.